Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Is the Netherlands headed for a lasting blunder? After blatantly seizing control of Anxi Semiconductor from Chinese company Wingtech Technology, new news has emerged from the Netherlands. On October 18, according to the ETOP Semiconductor community, all Nixperia employees in China issued emergency notices to clients. The Dutch headquarters abruptly announced that it would no longer pay Chinese employees and completely cut off access to company systems. This happened just two weeks after the Dutch government froze Nixperia's assets on September 30, citing national security concerns. Wingtech Technology a Chinese semiconductor giant, could only watch helplessly as the Dutch government forcibly seized its core assets, acquired for Euro 34 billion, suspended its Chinese-appointed CEO, and suspended Chinese employees' salaries and rights. This time, Mr. Lu Yuan was right. It is understood that on September 30th, the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Policy issued a ministerial order freezing the assets, intellectual property, and personnel adjustment rights of 13 Xperia entities worldwide for one year. More crucially, within 24 hours of the incident, three foreign executives at Nixperia, the chief legal officer, CFO, and COO, swiftly filed an emergency application with a Dutch court requesting the suspension of China CEO Zhang Xuezhang. Since then, the Nexperia incident has reached a climax. The Dutch court, skipping even a public hearing, directly approved the application of Nexperia's foreign executives, appointing foreign directors with casting votes and placing all of Wingtech Technologies shares in trusteeship in Hong Kong. In short, Wingtech technology still reaped the benefits, but it has lost its independent decision-making power over Nixperia. This power grab is nothing short of a blatant robbery. After authorizing the foreign directors, Nixperia's decisions on foreign trade and technology licensing can be made without even requiring Wingtech technology's authorization. The magnitude of the potential for technology leaks and supply chain security risks this poses is obvious to anyone with a discerning eye. Nexperia is no small company, after all. As a top 5 global power chip IDM, Nexperia contributed 14.7 billion yuan in revenue and 2.297 billion yuan in net profit to Wingtech Technology in 2024 with a high gross profit margin of 37.47%. Nearly every new energy vehicle is equipped with hundreds of Nexperia semiconductor devices, and its customers include 25,000 companies, including Tesla and Apple. After divesting its mobile phone ODM business, Nexperia Semiconductor has become almost the company's sole revenue growth engine. Now, with the Dutch government's freeze, while Chinese shareholders retain the right to economic benefits, they lose the right to control the technology portfolio of 16,000 products, and their initial investment of tens of billions of yuan may become a wedding dress for others. Looking back at the events surrounding this incident, the US government's presence loomed from the outset. On September 29th, the U.S. Department of Commerce issued the Export Control Penetration Rule, specifically imposing additional controls on subsidiaries, in which Wingtech Technology holds a majority stake of over 50%. However, just one night later, the Dutch authorities began targeting Nixperia Semiconductor, attempting to seize actual control of the company. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. had explicitly stated that if Ansem Semiconductor wanted to obtain an exemption, it would have to replace its Chinese CEO, Zhang Xuezhang. How could this be a coincidence? It was clearly a premeditated U.S.-Dutch persecution targeting Ansem Semiconductor. 
Mr. Lu Chiyuan is absolutely right. Looking back, Mr. Lu Chiyuan is absolutely right. The West uses national security as a bludgeon, essentially weaponizing the rules. The evil and hypocrisy of the Western legal system are laid bare. A painful blow is necessary before there's a chance of resolving the problem. The Dutch government invoked the Supply of Goods Act, originally intended for wartime material controls, but now it's being used against a Chinese semiconductor company operating normally. The Netherlands has resorted to extremes to target Chinese companies in peacetime. In 2023, the Netherlands approved Ansem Semiconductors, acquisition of the local startup Noe. Now, it's using the pretext of preventing technology transfer to target Chinese company assets. So why did they greenlight the acquisition of ASML subsidiaries by American Capital? This is essentially double standards. Giving American companies the green light to implement planned takeovers of Chinese companies, the Netherlands' actions directly expose the core of the West's so-called spirit of contract. Most disheartening is the Chinese employees who honestly work for Anshi Semiconductor, who have done nothing wrong, now face wage cuts and complete loss of access to company systems. In my opinion, China's regulation of rare earth raw materials is timely. While the Netherlands boasts advanced semiconductor equipment, it also relies on China's rare earth materials. Additionally, ASML holds a significant market share in the Chinese market. Any loss would negatively impact ASML's market position. China still has many countermeasures against the Netherlands, and this matter will ultimately be properly resolved. As an Xperia semiconductor, China, stated in a notice to all Chinese employees to customers, we believe that with the support of the government and the listed company, Nexperia Semiconductor, China, company, Limited will eventually overcome its difficulties and emerge from this predicament. The notice of wage cuts for Nexperia China employees serves as a wake-up call. In the game of great powers, there are no permanent friends, only permanent interests. When the West politicizes business issues, the path for Chinese companies going global is bound to be fraught with obstacles. However, history has long proven that blockades and suppression only spur Chinese companies to strengthen their independent innovation capabilities. When national security becomes a universal excuse for suppressing foreign companies, how much authority does the rule of international business still hold? The West's vaunted free market has now become a fig leaf for geopolitics. Finally, believe in the country. Believe that this will ultimately have a happy ending. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.